Well, let's knock another one of these ASL videos out here. So we are going to be looking at the ASL core module number 13, and this is Rising Sun. Uh, it's actually a remake of the Gun Ho module, and this is going to include a whole lot of stuff here. It's like Beyond Valor all over again. A um, lot of counters to punch, which I'm about, I don't know, maybe about 40% through clipping them. I ran out of, of uh, organizer trays here with other games and my other ASL material, so I got some of them bagged up waiting on some more counter trays to get here so I can continue getting those uh, organized in a efficient way. That way I can put scenarios together, preferably in a quick manner. You know the deal. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. This uh, game is a basically the Pacific Theater of ASL. And it combines the original AS, uh, L, excuse me, ASL modules of Code of Bushido and Gung Ho into one big old package. And it includes the entire orders of battle for the Japanese forces, as well as the Chinese forces, and also the United States Marine Corps. So uh, you're going to have the Chapter G, which, can, which uh, covers all the rules you need to play in the Pacific Theater of Operations and includes also all the errata for that as well. Uh, it also comes with a Chapter H for the Japanese and Chinese vehicles and ordnance, and for all the landing craft needed. Uh, it also is going to have 32 scenarios, and that are, those are the scenarios from the Code of, Code of Bushido and Gung Ho, uh, as, like I said, and there are 16 out-of-print PTO scenarios that originally appeared in the uh, pages of General Magazine, the ASL Annual, and the ASL Journal. So uh, you're also going to have one big campaign game included in here, and that's Gavudu Tanamboga. So that is the Sand and Blood. And uh, that's going to come with a 16 by 22 inch map specifically for that, and the Chapter Z for that campaign. I do have a couple other Chapter Zs for other campaigns the Guadalcanal historical module, stuff like that. I plan on highlighting those in future videos here pretty soon. But uh, And you're also going to get seven of the geomorphic map boards, uh, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, and 39, and map board number 47. It also has a whole lot of map overlays that I began cutting out, not too many of them. Um, you know, I'm trying to balance out a whole bunch of work in between uh, punching counters, trimming overlays, and painting miniatures. So, uh, anyway, so that's pretty much what's involved there in this package. As always, it's not a complete game. You're going to need the advanced squad leader game system required to play this, as well as Beyond Valor, because you're going to need those uh, counters in there as well, the markers, stuff like that. So, now that we've talked about the basics of what's in it, Let's go ahead and take a look at the things here. So here is the chapter H right here, and that is the vehicle and ordnance notes. You can see it's gonna start off with the Japanese vehicles, and then we're gonna move in, go through all those, and it has the vehicle listings right there at the top, all the specs and information you're gonna to need to field those vehicles. And then you're gonna get into further unit descriptions as well as some, uh, some turret information, uh, rules and stuff like that. So uh, we will keep on going and you can see then it talks into um, other machine gun, whole mounted machine guns, etc. Armored cars, the smaller ho -E tanks, the ho row tanks, ho key tanks, and those are just, um, or the, excuse me, the ho key armored, armored transport vehicle. But these were just tiny little tanks. Um, <laughs> I always think of... Uh, it surprised me when I started ordering miniatures at first because several years ago I was unfamiliar with Japanese armor and that, that was used in the Pacific. So the first time I ordered some miniatures and they were, you know, I, I game in the 15 millimeter scale. So uh, they looked more like they belonged in the six millimeter scale to me. Uh, as you can see here, actually on the box, it has one of the larger tanks that they used. But I mean, that, that seriously, that's one of the bigger tanks. Some of the ones that they used were just tiny. Uh, if you've ever watched the series, the HBO series, The Pacific, which is, uh, you know, sort of like uh, the Band of Brothers, except for the, the uh, PTO, 
There's a part way that where they are Russian Henderson Field, I believe is what it was. And you can see some of those tanks in use there, just small little things here. But you're going to have the Japanese ordnance listing as well in the Chapter H. And this will just go on and on, and it just covers a whole bunch of their field artillery, their 10-centimeter cannons, their, uh, their knee mortars, um, 1941 mountain guns, field guns, uh, 15-centimeter howitzers, 14-centimeter naval seacoast guns, and uh, everything you'll need pretty much to get involved there in the PTO with the Japanese orders of battle here. You're also going to have do-it-yourself charts um, and the OBA av availability charts, rarity factors coming up here. There's a rarity list right there. And getting further in here, it also is going to contain your Chapter H for the Chinese vehicles. And that's going to be a lot of lease and loan stuff. There's stuff, you know, that they used for the older German equipment, the Panzer Ones, uh, the Vickers from the British, uh, um, the T-26. Uh, I mean, they just, you know, they used material from pretty much wherever they could get it. And there was also just a, a tremendous amount of influx of material from all the Allied sources um, that were trying to keep the Japanese at bay without directly getting involved in that conflict in the early wars. So, and then you'll have, uh, I did skip through a couple pages there. I do want to kind of keep this stuff a little brief for upload purposes, but you know, the Chinese ordnance listing and more counter descriptions and, uh, equipment descriptions in here for just different stuff. And a lot of this stuff, like I said, it can be found in other uh, chapter H's, but some of it is so outdated that you won't find in the other chapter H's because, like I said, they were using um, outdated equipment for the most part here. And then we just go on to some more Chinese charts here, and of course, the rarity factors for the Chinese OBA. So, uh, and then the last page, you'll have uh, some of the different amphibious vehicles here. For the Chinese and the Japanese, I believe, mainly uh, pertains to the Chinese. So, And then you also have a landing craft rarity chart as well in there. So that will take care of the Chapter H. That's included in Rising Sun. Let me get that out of the way. And we will go ahead and move on to the core of this set, besides, of course, the lovely counters that are included. But you have the Chapter G which is uh, basically all your new special rules. This is going to go right into your core rule book that you have, the three ring binder, if you have one. If you have another way of storing your, your rules, then this will fit right in there as well. So you're going to have an order of presentation here. So it covers the Japanese, first of all, and then it gets into jungle and bamboo, palm trees, huts, kunai, swamp, rice paddies, panjis, animal packs, caves, landing craft, beaches, seaborne assaults, bulldozers, tropical climate conditions, and uh, by about that time you're getting into the U.S. Marine Corps and the early U.S. Army, as well as the Chinese. So, uh, and then you go through here and it basically starts going right through the list that I just named off about the PTO terrain and all that good stuff in there. And it's going to have descriptions of all that as well, all throughout these rules. They're all in color, nicely done. Um, just a, a lovely addition to the ASL kit. Um, I do enjoy the PTO particularly well. I'm very excited to really get started in this. I couldn't hold my excitement too much. I did clip some of the counters and played a couple of the smaller scenarios already. So uh, I will say it's a little, you know, you're adding on more rules into the ASL system. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just more stuff to learn and if you're new to the system i you know it's it's a it's a big deep pool to jump into so as always once you get into the ter the uh, terrain descriptions you're all you're going to have the hex uh, display what the hexes look like with that particular terrain and then you're going to have a 3d view of that particular hex what it would look like if you were down on the ground in real life so you know just it's it it's an excellent production by MMP, as always, when it comes to ASL. And they do try and make the learning curve 
as easy as possible for what it is. Although, you know, they can only make it so easy. It's it's um, a truly a simulation game. So if you're not looking for a simulation, then I don't know what to tell you. But if you are, you pretty much come to the right place. And uh, I don't want to go through all that chapter G there because it's not in the binder. And I'm having a hard time here just trying to, you know, flip through the pages and show them to you at, at, at all at once. But... There's going to be a whole lot of different rules in here that you haven't seen in the ETO, specifically the uh, climate rules as well. So it's good stuff. I'm excited to to uh, get it packed up for good in the ASL rule book and get on down with it. So then you are going to have some new national capabilities charts that are included in this, and you're going to have a whole lot of different things for the Germans, the Italians, the Finnish, Axis miners, the Japanese, the allied, allied miners, Russians, Americans, including the USMC, uh, British, French, the Chinese, and the Reds and Partisans. And then on back, you're going to have a PTO terrain chart. So this will help you out when you're trying to look for quick references for the new terrain that you're going to be thrown into on these maps here. And there is a lot of that terrain on these maps. You're also going to have another insert for quick reference. And this is going to have animal pack gun, vulnerability tables, your uh, bog tables, fast to ground unbogging, uh, PTO date dependent rules, uh, just a whole lot of stuff. Tank hunter, hero creation, and... Let's see what's on back here. Your heavy surf swamping, passenger charts, unloading cost charts, heavy swir heavy surf unbeaching. So you can see here, it, obviously, there's going to be a lot of rules involving amphibious assaults like you haven't seen in the ETO and any of the other expansions there. So, And then we'll get into some of the maps. Actually, we're going to look at the overlays first. And these were on top, so I'll just go ahead and throw these out there while I have them in my hand. And there is going to be uh, four of these sheets included here, and these are overlays that you'll cut out and trim. And then you'll be able to put them uh, you know, over or alongside map edges for those amphibious assaults. Nice long stretches of open water, possibly shallow. And then we'll get into some of the overlays right here. You'll have smaller ones uh, to add different terrain features, whether it's jungle or rice paddies. And then you'll have larger ones such as this that I've already cut out. And you can see that trail going through some thick jungle with a lot of elevation changes and some nasty terrain there. Uh, it's going to get nasty. I can tell you that right now. Very excited to, to jump into this. The more I talk about it, um, the more antsy I get here, especially with this module in, in general. I just, uh, the PTO, I'm very fascinated by that type of warfare and, and the events that took place. I think it's a lot, a lot to do with the combination of naval warfare, air warfare, as well as the boots on the ground and in the jungles, uh, amphibious assaults, the defensive uh, perimeters that were set up in some of those areas. And it's just fascinating to me. So I'm excited. I don't know if you've understood that yet by how many times I've said it, but very much so. Here's a big overlay there with lots of rice patties. And you're going to have some more overlays here. Uh, miscellaneous buildings, villages, uh, a church it looks like, and a big field right there. We have another one that's similar right here. This is to, you got a lot of maps that have, you know, covered in terrain. So you have the availability for these overlays up top uh, are to basically clear out that terrain and make it more clear if need be. And you have the same thing here. Different minor little terrain pieces, some fields, some orchards, or, you know, the lighter, the lighter hexes uh, fields. You have thick grasslands, some more fields, different overlays. Some of these look a little bit similar, but eventually you'll be using a lot of them. There's a little pond there. 
I'll just kind of skip through some of the ones that look the same. And you're going to have a nice wide uh, waterway there. I'm not sure what scenario that's used for, but I am interested in finding that out. Then you have some smaller creeks here. And then you have some more thick, nasty jungle terrain overlays with some trails in there. That's going to take care of the overlays that are included. Get those out of the way. We'll move right along to the maps here. Now, you won't find as many maps, like I said, in this one as you would in, let's say, Beyond Valor. But the amount of overlays, as you saw, is going to allow a lot of different construction methods and, uh, and variability in these maps that you do have. So, I mean, you could complete this map right here. You could pretty much make it look nothing like it is here just by using those overlays. You're going to have a tremendous amount of options with these maps. Here is map number 35. And we're going to have map number 34 here, another nasty looking one. These are all geomorphic once again, so you can put any of these maps side by side and they will match up. Roads, trees, everything about them. That is map number 37 right there. Here's a particularly vicious looking map. Uh, it looks like a very steep hill hilltop right there. Pretty much stretching the whole board is map number 39 with the trail running parallel to it on the side there but this hill or it's a lot bigger than a hill actually but um it is completely enveloped in jungle terrain it looks like jungles so and here's one of my more favorite looking maps here is map number 38 and this looks like it has some airfields in here uh ready to set up for some american or japanese assaults some desperate defenses trying to hold on to that airstrip that's the kind of stuff i really like in the pto then we have map number 47 that one looks like a more flat terrain with some uh, hills and elevation gains on the perimeter of the map. But for the most part, it looks kind of depressed here in the center, really wet and soggy more than likely. And that takes care of all the maps. Next, we can go ahead and take a look at the scenarios. And there's a big stack of scenarios included in this one as well. You can see right there. And these scenarios can take place, you know, on lots of different sizes of these maps. You can see little tiny strips where these are going to take place, and they're going to include uh, Chinese versus Japanese, USMC versus Japanese. There's a whole lot of scenarios. There's also going to be um, in uh, the Asian theater of the British, the Gurkhas versus the Japanese as well. So you, you can see here that you're going to have a lot of options in this you got some philippine scouts elements of the first platoon versus the japanese 14th army ramsey's charge yes yeah, so there's just a tremendous amount of material here to get involved with in the game i have a feeling this particular module is going to keep me busy for many years to come, honestly. Um, you even have scenarios, some of the some of the scenarios are gonna take up more than one page with their special rules. Special rules will be on the back of the scenario. So not all of them are double-sided, as in two scenarios, one on each side, not all of them are like that. So Jungle Citadel, that's scenario 71. Here's scenario 73. This is one of the larger ones in terms of scale and scope, the terrain used. Uh, this is an amphibious assault. You can see some of the overlays are used here. Those ocean overlays are laid over the map. 
to create the beaches alongside the jungle terrain. Here's another one that's going to use three of the maps along with those ocean overlays there. The bloody red beach, that is Guam, July 20, 21st, 1944. So these are some of my favorite subjects in World War II. And I'm really, I was really happy to see the content that this uh, module covers here. Sorry for me stopping and stuttering here. I'm just so engrossed in this material that it's hard for me to, to really focus and talk about it all. But we go on and on and on. And, you know, there's historical descriptions for each scenario. It just makes it such a joy to play this because there's such great descriptions and, and history involved in this. Shoestring Ridge. These are... See. Yeah, this is for SL 61. So there's actually somewhere in there. I already passed it, but it took up both one scenario took up both the front and back and also uh has a third third section here so got to be mindful of the things you're looking through i got to figure out a way to organize these scenario cards right here um the counters like i said i don't have a whole lot to show you because i've already started trimming them and packing them but you can see the chinese are brown with the blue uh interior on their counters right there in this pack um and you're just going to have a lot of counters, and uh, I've already started getting them organized for the most part. Like I said, I'm waiting on the new counter counter uh, trays so I can get these organized in a good manner. Got bonsai charge markers right there, and I made copies of the counter sheets. That way, I knew I can always check if I'm missing something or anything else. And then we have the counters. I still have to get punched here. I got a little half a sheet right there I need to get punched, as well as some more markers. Japanese vehicles and ordnance, got a whole lot of those I need to get punched and clipped. Chinese vehicles and ordnance, still a little bit more. And then some fortifications and other markers here some amphibious vehicles over there some bulldozers and some heavy equipment down where my thumb's at right here and that's going to include all the counters so it's a lot of work to punch and trim these things if you trim your counters i, I really do like the look of the circular trimmed counters so you know i definitely think it's worth the time to do that <clears throat> makes stacking easier and it also makes them look a lot prettier so that's going to pretty much conclude conclude rising sun oh no it's not i didn't show you the chapter z the campaign for sand and blood and this is going to be a short campaign for the most part it's about four or five pages but you're going to have your oob back there as well as some special campaign rules as well involved in that and on the back you will have your campaign game log so you can keep track of that those things while you're playing through i would highly recommend making a copy of that and not writing on the original of course and then you will have the campaign map which is included in this i'm interested in playing this this map looks pretty interesting here but you can see it's a little island with an atoll and uh i'm excited to play this i i don't know how brutal this will be and I've never heard of this operation until I purchased this module so sand and blood Gavudu Tanambogo it's the campaign that's included in rising sun and I have several other campaigns revolving around the PTO as well so I'm excited to take a look at those get those out show them to you guys and eventually once I get all of these counters clipped from all my other modules as well get them organized and uh, get through all these videos we're definitely going to start playing this game a lot so anyway once again thanks for listening to me ramble about nothing here sometimes i sound a little bit incoherent but when it comes to asl especially because i pull this out to talk about it and it's like i just want to start reading it right then and there and forget talking about it so 
Uh, like I said, thanks for listening to the rambles, the incoherent speeches. And uh, you guys stay safe as always. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you guys later.